And these videos, these School of the Wilds videos are becoming available on YouTube. Whoops, Cleveland Metro Parks YouTube. So you can tune back in in a few days and, and uh, you can share these as well. And if you are watching on YouTube at a later point, you know, welcome. Throw this video a thumbs up. That way it'll bookmark it for you. At, uh, you can visit it and find it at a later point. And it is part of a playlist on Cleveland Metro Park's YouTube channel called School of the Wilds. You can also save that playlist and be uh, notified when new videos are added. In addition, you may as well subscribe to the Cleveland Metro Park's YouTube channel. Yeah, so mammals, I was mentioning um, all over the place, but secretive. I was getting snow off my driveway earlier, at least 10 species of birds flitting about, you know, black capped chickadee, tough to tip mouse, uh, a red-headed woodpecker, but uh, no mammals, maybe one squirrel. So uh, yeah, they're pretty secretive. Let's, let's dig in though and see um, what kind of mammals we have in Ohio, what they look like, what you can expect to see on the trail. And you can learn about some of my favorites. Are these mammals? Do you see them in there? These were taken with hidden cameras in the forest that are triggered by movement. They take a few, like, pop, 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 three photos, maybe a short video. And on the bottom left, that's a raccoon. Can you guess what that is on the bottom right? And that's an opossum. And we are using the chat feature. I can see that if you have any, any further questions. On that first slide, we had someone uh, mention that Said, they said, nice otter. Uh, that's great. Good guess. That's an aquatic mammal. Yeah, but that was a beaver. That was a beaver actually on that slide. Uh, we'll visit beavers later. Oh yeah. Okay. Bottom right. That's an opossum. But how do we know these are mammals? You know, what are, what are mammals? So mammals, it is a, within the kingdom of animals, you know that much. It's an animal. It's a vertebrate. It's a warm blooded vertebrate. And it has mammary glands. It feeds its young with milk. Even the egg layers do this. And oh yeah, egg layers. We'll talk about that. And of course, they're covered with hair and or fur. So when I say it's a warm-blooded vertebrate, I'm excluding. You look down here, bottom of the slide, you'll see other classes of vertebrates. You'll see fish, amphibians, reptiles. But there, there's another warm-blooded group of vertebrates. It's, it's the birds. All right, here is your sort of your classic slash average mammal. When I'm looking at this animal, for starters, you can barely see it. So we'll take a closer look momentarily. I'll give you a second to try to find the animal. It's dead center. One of its eyes is fixed on you. Its ears are ready to go, listening everywhere. That was an eastern cottontail. And here are the tracks. The curious tracks from a cottontail. Can you guess which way this animal is moving? Is it moving towards the top right corner of the screen or is it moving down to the left? It was, if you guessed it's moving up and to the right, the tracks are a little, little odd. So for example, I've just circled a pair of, of the tracks. Do you think that's the front paws or the back paws? That's the front paws. So when it lands, its big hind feet actually land in front of the front paws, if that makes sense here. Now they're both labeled for clarity. You've got the eastern cottontail. Again, I think of this as your average mammal by size and by weight and the fact that it is a prey item, something that's hunted. And if you're being hunted, you better keep a lookout. You better be able to see forward to the side, to the back. Your ears better be able to rotate all over the place. I think of this as a, you're ready to go. You're 360 degrees ready to go. You don't want to be eaten. If the cottontail is your average mammal, then the bats are, are your average mammal, your, your most common mammal. So out of all the thousands of species of mammals that there are, about 20% of them are bats. So over 1,000 species of, of bats, uh, maybe closer to 1,500, 
and uh, there's about 6,000 species of mammal now. So that is, that's a pretty common, that's a pretty species group, many, many species within the bat group. And as we're taking a look at this bat, it's the little brown myotis, the little brown bat. And some of the ways you can identify a bat are by looking at the coloration of the, of the wing membrane there. And on its belly, the, the ventral surface, it's got some lighter fur. So there's just some features about a bat that you, and the size of its ear, the relative size of its ears, things like that. There's a little brown bat. It hunts after sunset um, and before sunrise. During the day, it likes to hide in warm places like bat foxes. It's actually an endangered species now in Ohio along with the tricolored bat, the northern long-eared bat. And actually, northern long-eared bat is also threatened in, you, in the United States. It's a federally threatened species. So, and we have, an we have an, a federally endangered bat species in Ohio, the Indiana bat. Uh, bats aren't doing so good, guys, especially the small ones. Uh, there's a fungus that irritates them while they should be hibernating if they migrate south and they hibernate somewhere, let's say in a cave. Um, the, the fungus, among other things, like deteriorating that wing membrane with the top arrow, which can hinder their flight. But among other things, that fungus irritates them and wakes them up in the middle of winter. And what do bats eat? They eat flying insects. So there are no flying insects. There's no food in the middle of winter. That spells doom for the bats. The Ohio bat a working group has a conservation plan that's definitely worth finding on the internet if, if you want to learn more about bats in Ohio. Worldwide, mammals, huge diversity. I look at all the different types of mammals here. And can you find any that live in your state or from wherever you're tuning in? Texas, all right. You know, interesting, we had a question earlier. Somebody said, do you have, it was an audio call-in person, and uh, I'll, I'll answer this question now. You folks can ask questions in the chat feature. I'd be happy to answer those along the way and, and cl clean them up at the end. They asked, do we have skunks in Ohio? Based on the phrase, I assume they're not in Ohio. Uh, I can say that, yes, we have skunks in Ohio. We have one skunk species. It's the striped skunk. There are four skunk species across the United States, actually throughout North America. The spotted skunk, that's worth a Google. It's such a pretty animal. It is found west of Ohio, not in Ohio, but oh, um, on the western portion of the Midwest and into the Great Plains. That's the spotted skunk. Again, in Ohio and throughout the United States, and the most commonly distributed is the striped skunk. And then for uh, Ian in Texas, I believe you guys have, depending on where, where you are there, a a um, hog-nosed skunk, which dips down all the way through Mexico and into South America, and the and the uh, the hooded skunk. So you might have a the hooded skunk as well, and that's in the southwestern uh, parts of the United States too, and into Mexico. So you there? Okay, all right. So you might even have two or three skunk species. Oh, anyways, yeah. I've, I hope you scanned this. I should have put the the titles of the names of what these species are, and um, I'm sure you found some that are in where, where you're watching. Ooh, look at that star-nosed mole, second up in the bottom in the middle. We will talk more about that later. One of my favorites. And yeah, we have the fox squirrel in Ohio. We've got that opossum. Okay. As I mentioned, about 6,000 species. For the longest, there was 5,488. And then this number has been bumped up to 6,000 species. This is across the world, divided into three groups. I sort them into three groups. That first group, those are the monotremes, the egg layers, like the platypus. And can you, anybody out there, tell me number one, the, 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 the one, there, the yellow one. Tell me what animal do you think that is? It is an egg layer. Yes, it's an egg layer. It is not the platypus. Who wants to take a stab at number two? That's one of our marsupials. And uh, that's in the Mediterranean group. I'm seeing your questions here. And, and we've moved on from skunks, but I like the question. Okay, your dog has been sprayed every year. I'm sorry to hear that. 
And yes, uh, that's number two is the opossum. And then over on the right, and I'll tell you what number one was in a second here. And then over on the right, what is that? It's number three. And uh, of course we do not have that in Ohio. I snapped that picture at Cleveland Metro Park Zoo. And that is a true mammal, it's a eutherian, it's a placental mammal. So these are the three groups. Number one, that's an echidna, yeah, all right, Min and Richard. And a great guess, you know, on these other guesses here and prairie dog. Okay, so number one is the echidna. That's an example of a monotreme, a very rare and unusual, uncommon group of mammals that lay eggs, but still produce milk for their young. And you'll notice that when clarifying what a mammal is and explaining that, I did not say gives birth to live young. Uh, number two, the marsupials. Yeah, that's our Virginia opossum and hedgehog okay i can see why you would guess hedgehog marge margie okay and the true uh, the true mammal the the excuse me the true uh, placental mammal that's number three that is a meerkat also known as a siri cat okay found in uh, south africa for example and that echidna is found in australia among other places let's move forward closer to home in north america the only so, so, so they're all placental mammals. The only marsupial we have is that opossum that you saw. We don't have any of the egg layers. Oh, no. Okay. In Ohio, 60 mammal species. And mostly these are trailside mammals. They're all, I'd like to say, nearby, but not quite accessible. Super secretive, these mammals are. You're always going to get more bird species. I led a bird walk this morning with a fellow Cleveland Metro Parks naturalist vet. Joe Ave, and we picked up 14 species on this snowy day outside of Cleveland, nowhere near Lake Erie. 14 species. How many mammals did we get? One. We weren't looking too hard, <laughs> but we weren't using tracks either, but we saw a gray squirrel. And Cleveland Metro Parks, that's a, that's a moving target, but I'll say 43 is the species of mammal that you can and have been documented regularly in Cleveland Metro Parks. Hey, should I have counted the cat, the domestic cat, the feral cat, in that number? I said 60 mammals in Ohio. Now, when I learned mammals back in, back at Ohio State University, I studied about 55 uh, for the state of Ohio. I'm kind of curious, should we have included uh, the domestic cat? And I said 60, so cat would make it 61. You know, they certainly make an impact on the environment, right? How common are red squirrels in Ohio? Thanks for the question here, Bill. Um, they are a common squirrel, not, not commonly seen in all habitats. They have their preference of forest type, and that's actually one of the first mammals I will introduce momentarily. Does that 43 mammals in the park include the zoo? Richard Moore, thank you for that question. Take, take a guess. Okay. All right, moving forward, I'm going to divide these. Let's quickly put all the mammals in Ohio on the screen, at least their, their families within their order. And so rodent is an order, for example, the kingdom final class order. So um, class is mammals, order is rodentia. We've got all these different families. In fact, one of them, let's see, the old, the, uh, it would be under the rats, mice, voles, lemmings family. We've got the Allegheny wood rat. That's an endangered species. You're only going to see that, and let me use this feature here. You're only going to, it only shows up here. I'm circling where I think is Adams County in southern, um, southwest Ohio. So I think their range, the Allegheny wood rat, leads into uh, Kentucky, for example. And then, yes, and porcupines on that list. Rarely documented. I've never seen one personally. I believe uh, that would be the eastern part of Ohio and maybe in the 1950s, but Division of Wildlife includes it. All right, our next order, the carnivorans. And we have all these families here. You'll see next to cat, there's bobcat. And then I was, of course, posing the question, should I include the feral cat, the house cat, as they certainly do have an impact, ecologically speaking, on their environment. We've got that one skunk, the striped skunk. And um, bats, uh, as I, met, I was talking about bats earlier, you know, bad news for bats right now with that West Nile, the, uh, the white-nosed 
syndrome, the fungus. Yeah, so bats aren't doing so good. Big drops in their populations, especially the smaller bat species. Uh, insectivore, okay, shrews and moles. Ooh, I have a, one of my favorite moles to share with you later. That's not at all mole-like. This thing's actually aquatic. And we've got the eastern cottontail and the snowshoe hare. Yes, you're reading that correct. I do have, uh, I do have pigs on, uh, under ungulates. I'm reading the question here from Michelle. Deer are even-toed ungulates. I believe that they are. Uh, is are, is that a is it a comment or a question um, or a challenge? I'm not sure. You know, when they leave their tracks in the, in the snow and in the mud, you just see two toes. I think they actually have another two higher up the ankle, if you will. But sure, if that's four, that sounds like an even even toed. Rodents, squirrels, and chipmunks. I'm reading another question here. I know we have six in Cleveland. What are we missing? Okay, rodents squirrels and chipmunks. I'm not going to go through every species here. I'm going to feature some in a few minutes. I'm trying to look at which family you're talking about, Richard. You got the eastern chipmunk, fox squirrels, uh, gray squirrel, red squirrel. And you said, I know we have six in Cleveland. What one are we missing? Maybe we'll have to chat later so I can. Oh, I see you have, okay, squirrels, chipmunks line. Uh, in, uh, probably 13 line ground squirrel. Okay, is that on your list? How about that? Pigs, yeah, we have feral swine in Ohio. Not too many, but they cause trouble in agriculture areas. Yeah, and there's that Virginia opossum under marsupial. Hey, the red squirrel. Now, there is a red squirrel a, 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 with a Eurasian distribution in Europe, Asia. It's the cutest little thing and it has tufts on its ears. It's similar to ours. We don't get the one with the cute ear tufts. So take a look, take a look at that eye. It has a ring of white, uh, a split ring of white around that eye. This is a, it's awake during the day. So that's what that word means, diurnal. Think of it as the opposite of nocturnal. So we, us humans usually are diurnal. Mixed hardwood forests. I think of them as a little more of mature forests. And this is not a fox squirrel. We'll look at that in a moment. That's a huge squirrel compared to this red squirrel. Both can make a lot of noise though. For these species that I'll put up on these pages here, we, uh, I'll also include the gestation length. So that's how long the young are, are cooking inside of the mother and then when and how many are born. Margie question bears, yes, well, so there's a black bear species in Ohio, and it's certainly not common. It's actually considered an endangered species in Ohio. Sometimes it works its way over from Pennsylvania and then it sees humans, maybe gets scared and runs back. And we'll talk about that later. I'll, 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 we'll dive into bears a little bit. Fox squirrel, I was mentioning, this is that bigger, bigger than the red squirrel. And yes, bigger than the, the one where I'm pointing to and it says not, that's a gray squirrel. Notice the, Belt, the chest, the belly, the ventral area of the gray squirrel is white. And the fox squirrel, not so. It does have some counter shading, a lighter belly, darker back, but it's, it's not white. It's going to be gold or yellow or brown. So on the left, that's the fox squirrel, big squirrel. Uh, towards the right top, that's the gray squirrel, a little smaller. These are all tree squirrels. They're diurnal. Um, but they do forage for food on, on and near the ground. They're herbivores, 20 teeth, so they do not have canines. But by the way, that question about, that someone mentioned, nice otter on that very first slide, which was only on there for a split second. Um, otters have canines, they have a lot more teeth. They have 36 teeth. Uh, beaver, fewer, you know, just, just 20 teeth. Beavers have big ears compared to an otter. Uh, habitats are different too. Beavers are a lot more common. Uh, let's see, I want you to take a look at this, this black squirrel here. That's a, that's a melanistic phenotype. That's one way to refer to this animal. It has something wonky with its genes that the, that it ends up being expressed in this black form. They were common in Ohio that they became extirpated in Ohio. That means they they were gone from the state by 1930, I believe. 
And then there was an effort from Kent State University. They grabbed a small population of 10 from Ontario and released them on Kent State University's campus in, the, in around 1961, I believe. And there you go. Now we have these black squirrels again. Now, why is it on this slide here with a fox squirrel and a gray squirrel? Because across the United States and Canada, both the fox squirrel and gray squirrel can show up in the color black. Gray squirrel more so, I would think of from Ohio north and the fox squirrel from Ohio south. And we could talk more about that, but we're gonna, we're gonna keep up our pace here. Here's that beaver, okay? When we're looking at a beaver, you wanna look for that wide back tail. Hey, look at those ears, big ears. Okay, wide back tail, it's flat. There's, it's hairless. And you take a peek over on the right, that's a muskrat, narrow tail. It's aligned in a different way. Now this terminology might not, isn't for everybody, but it's dorsoventrally aligned, whereas the, the uh, beaver tail is flat. It's horizontal with the ground. So the muskrat tail is, is flattened like this, okay? beaver tail like that. They're nocturnal, but hey, I see them during the day. So hey, the field guides say they're nocturnal. I'm starting to doubt it. Uh, they're both the, the, uh, the, the beaver, just 20 teeth I had mentioned, and we're looking at that tail here. Now I want you to guess, are you looking at a beaver or a muskrat? And you can think about it, you can type it in the chat if you want, but I'll give you a clue. Okay, taking a look at the uh, different angle here of this animal, this rodent. Take a look at its tail. Skinny, muskrat, yes, muskrat, there you go, there you go, that's a muskrat. Oh yeah, and beavers can, they are true ecosystem engineers. They can change the way water flows, which is not always enjoyed by humans, but let me tell you, it's great for wildlife. If you can create a wetland, that's great for all groups of, all sorts of groups of wildlife, including, including plants. But when we have trails at Cleveland Metro Parks, on occasion, I'll take out a merit badge, Boy, Boy Scouts, and we will wrap certain trees, like I think I have birch trees here, birch trees, and we will wrap them with this chicken wire so the beavers stay off, because they will chew trees, they will eat the wood, and those trees will fall over. Not, not so good for the tree, and will also block up the water. They like water. What animal is this? What do you think? Take a close look. Give you some size perspective. It's a little bigger than a squirrel, a little bigger than a fox squirrel, smaller than a cat. It's a type of weasel. It's walking on frozen water. <laughs> yes, mink, one of my favorites too. American mink. Nocturnal, so special when I get to see one during the day. That photo was set up. Uh, I set that up with some Boy Scouts, actually. And we found some cool things with that camera at night, uh, among them mink. Now, this is a carnivorous creature, so it's packed with teeth, specialized teeth to do all sorts of different things. It hunts. It's a predator. And it, it swims and it hunts, too. It can, it can grab fish. Take a look at the photo on the bottom right. You'll see a little white chin patch there. Uh, and, and into the throat. That's typical if you're ever having trouble IDing this animal. The way it moves is typical of weasels. Now, while you watch this, I'm gonna read that question there. Mr. Cullick, my understanding is that, the, that beavers were nocturnal until the days of the trappers, which will put great pressure on them. Do you know if that is correct? Hey, you know, humans can change the behavior of animals. I'm not familiar with that explanation, something I look forward to reading more about. Yeah, those mink videos right there were taken right through the windows at Rocky River Nature Center. Beautiful animal. Imagine seeing that when you weren't expecting it. Red fox, also a special animal to see. Considered nocturnal and crepuscular, which means a dawn, active, active during dawn and dusk. So I told you diurnal is awake during the day, nocturnal at night, crepuscular 
think about dawn and dusk. So right before night and right in the morning, like a white-tailed deer. And the, the slide is still on the squirrel slide. Is, uh, let me know, folks, that you're still seeing the, uh, that you're seeing a red fox. I, I believe, Amy, this might be a tech issue on your side. No, it's foxy. Okay, thank you. I'm sorry, Amy, out there. Okay, I hope you I hope you can work that out. This is a carnivore. The red fox is a carnivore. 42 teeth, that's a lot of teeth. Okay, that's a lot of teeth for a mammal. That's up there. And uh, when you see this animal, very, it's small. Okay, smaller than you would think. Very fluffy tail, white tip on the end of the tail. And in quotes, black socks. So dark ankles and feet, feet down there. So red fox black socks and white tip on the tail what's that so i captured this animal with a night cam and with a wildlife camera and take a look at the tail it's pointed down the tip of the tail is dark thank you for your suggestion michelle you are right i'll tell you you're right uh, because you, you sent that to me privately not everyone sees the right answer you are right too <laughs> everyone who's guessing so far and uh, let's see uh tall ears okay long legs long pointed snout tail hanging down some will tell you it's 45 degree pointed down 45 degrees well, what does that mean well look at look at the coyote that's what it means right there dark tip on the tail and i know that just because i can kind of get a sense of the photo but wait a minute this whole coyote is dark so there's some variability in their coat as well. Their habitat, you know, I typed prairies and open woodlands. I uh, tell you what, they're in, in the suburbs, they're in the cities. It's an omnivore. I have personally fed the captive, captive coyotes, um, vegetables and fruit, but yeah, they like their meat and they're not hunting big animals. They're taking down small animals like an Eastern cottontail. They're not hunting an adult deer unless it's been hit by a car or if it's already um, if it's if it's sick for some reason strongly nocturnal and I'll tell you what uh, data shows their activity increases when human activity decreases so you're not super likely to run into a coyote now if you're watching this live it is february and we're in the middle of their breeding season here so uh, definitely, I would encourage you when walking your dog in and out of Cleveland Metro Parks, in the, especially in the evenings, um, use a leash. Walk your dog with a leash. You don't want your dog following its nose and finding a den site for a coyote. All right, coyote, we didn't always have coyotes. They, if you will, replaced wolves in Ohio. And with the uh, wolves moving out, coyotes moving in, 1919, the year 1919, they were documented a little documented properly uh, a few years after that and their dna is mostly coyote and get this when they arrived there were still some wolves so they mated with wolves so there is wolf dna in our coyotes let's say 20 percent this is based on data but i'm averaging and then there's also dog dna because then the wolves move out and with humans moving into ohio more and more and more humans then there's dogs and more dogs in Ohio. So then coyotes are mating with dogs, reproducing with dogs. So let's say 10% of their DNA is on average from a dog. So our Eastern coyote is a mix of coyote and wolf and dog. Take a look at this. Take a look at this photo side by side. Now these look pretty big to me, but look at the variability in their coat. The question is, when I hear the coyote howling at night, what is happening? They could be communicating. On occasion, I've heard them go, yip, 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 yip. And also they get each other going, but they are vocal animals. And if they're vocalizing, I would assume that they are communicating with each other. I see this question here, are there coy wolves in the state? Well, I hope I just explain that in detail because it should be called a coy wolf dog. Don't you think? Ooh, take a look at that. I believe this was Brexville Reservation that J Jen Brumfield captured this photo. Beautiful animal. Look at that tail pointed down, uh, tall ears, long snout, long legs. All right, raccoon. 
still uh, wonderful animals. Let's see what time it is. Oh, okay, we're good on time. We're good on time. And uh, you know, sometimes raccoons can be annoying to homeowners, but they are actually rather fascinating. So there are more raccoons where there are people. That's the word synanthropic right there, synanthropic. This is a phenomenon to have more wildlife of a certain species around humans. And when I say raccoons are special, this animal has, it, ha it is packed with nerve fibers and it's on its hands that really improve its tactile impulses. So in the portion of the brain, which interprets that sense of the tactile, what it's touching, that portion of the brain is really big. So this is one of the animals, one of the best ever tested animals for its sense of touch. I personally cared for a few of these in captivity and they can do amazing things with those hands. And how about this? They can reach into a bucket full of gravel, pea gravel, so small, smooth, rounded gravel, the size of grapes and, and, and blueberries. And you can hide some grapes in that bucket. They can reach in the bucket and they can pull out the grapes. It's, it's amazing what they can do with those hands. And they can climb. You're looking on the lower right here. I captured this photo. This animal can rotate its hips 180 degrees. So we can rotate it all over the place. That, that's astounding. That's pretty unusual for a mammal. Black bears, we talked for moments about this earlier. They do show up in Ohio. This photo is from Geauga County. Geauga County in Ohio is in Northeast Ohio. It's nearby Cuyahoga County, which is the county where Cle the city of Cleveland is. They're nocturnal, they're omnivorous. They're not these big bad creatures that are going out there hunting. They like blueberries, you know, they like berries and nuts, right? Right on the ground and off of trees. And I mentioned that they might show up because they're part of a different population. Maybe it's a young, younger male and it's wandering and it's looking for a great place to live. And so they might wander over into the state of Ohio. And when I say that, I'm suggesting from Pennsylvania, for example. And then someone gets a photo like this and then maybe for a day or two, people track them and then you never hear about them again. The Division of Wildlife, that's our state DNR, they don't do anything about the black bears unless they're causing trouble or unless they're trapped. They'll just let the black bears be. This is an endangered species in Ohio, very few. Oh, here's our distribution. You take a look at the bottom right, that map, as the map counties for Ohio get darker, their numbers, their population is higher. Uh, prior to now, they were extirpated from the state by 1850. Extirpated means not present in a area. So not extinct, but extirpated from Ohio. And then uh, just a general trend of increasing sightings, confirmed sightings. You don't need to read the, all the numbers down there, but just a general trend of increasing uh, confirmed documentation in Ohio over the years, over the years. Good question, Scott. What is the state doing to protect the black bear? I presume you're asking this because I said, hey, this is a breather, folks. Take a breather. Here's our downward deer. Stand up, take a stretch. We're almost through. Scott, I'll answer your question. The, uh, this division of wildlife that I know of does not have a recovery plan for this endangered species, the black bear, like they would for some other endangered species. So not every endangered species gets a recovery plan. So uh, there, are protected, there are protected species in that you cannot hunt and trap them, but there's, there's not, any, not much to my knowledge above that. All right, you've enjoyed this female deer. Uh, doing the downward deer here, downward doe. And I told you, I hope you've taken a stretch. We'll move forward, all right? That was a white-tailed deer, it was a female. This is a male, you can tell by the antlers. It's our state mammal. This is a mammal talk for the state of Ohio. This is our state mammal. It's not exclusive to Ohio, though. Several states have a state mammal, which is the white-tailed deer. Crepuscular, so very active at dawn and dusk. They like edges. What in the world is an edge? Well, if you take a forest and put a road right through it and you build some houses next to that road, you've created edges in the backyards of either side of the road. That's the edge of a forest habitat. 
deer do really well in, in and around edges. In the middle of the forest, you might not see as many deer, but the populations are higher around edges, which means they're higher around roads. And that's not good for us drivers. They're an herbivore. They only eat plants, do not eat meat. They have this long gestation period of six and a half months. And it's, it's actually regardless of when they mate and reproduce, uh, their young are, are roughly born around the same time. Who are there bar bobcats in the parks? Good question. I love I love bobcats. Um, when you say the parks, I think you are referring to Cleveland Metro Parks. No, we do we do not have a documented bobcat in Cleveland Metro Parks. It's a very rare animal and uncommon in the state of Ohio. But like bear, uh, there actually there's more bobcats than bears. But there are some small populations and documented and with confirmed sightings a little more year after year. These are antlers, by the way, not horns. If you take a look on the left, this is the this is the the deer that just grew the antlers in the spring, okay? And it is covered with fur, which we nickname velvet. And then it scrapes that velvet off, and that's the summer rack on the right. The velvet's gone. So when I'm painting a picture here, there's a cycle to these antlers. They grow, they fall off. They have a bony core. Well, so do horns, but horns have a keratin sheath. Keratin, like your hair and your fingernails, they have a sheath, which is a separate layer on top. And horns usually don't fall off, so they're permanent on the animal, and they are not branched. As we're looking at this antler, these antlers here that are growing with age, they're branched. They split. Horns usually don't do that some differences between antlers and horns. Uh, I, 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 this uh, white-tailed deer here was walking around with one antler. I couldn't not take that photo. I hope I didn't embarrass you. But this uh, is what happens as, see over here on the right, they scrape these trees. The antlers can be itchy. Maybe they're leaving a little bit of scent behind. Maybe they're just communicating with respect to territory and they sometimes can pop those antlers right up. They fall off, okay? How heavy are the antlers on average? I don't know the weight. They're probably only a few ounces. They're extremely strong, but not super heavy. Interesting. I guess maybe bone isn't all that heavy. They're somewhat porous. They almost feel light to me, but very strong. Good question, Scott. This can happen with deer. On the bottom left, I stumbled across this fawn, a young deer, and it was right on the gravel next to the road. This is not something that you would necessarily do unless you're, com unless you're comfortable with it, but I had to pick it up and scoot it off and slide it over there into the woods. It was just right next to the road. But should you see on the main photo here on the right, something like this in the woods or in your backyard, especially this summer, I'm telling you right now, the animal is not orphaned. It does have a parent that is caring for it, which is just out and about running errands. It'll be back, maybe it's out eating, and it's stashed the young away because the young, it's a little bit of a liability. That young fawn doesn't know what it's doing walking around in the suburbs with its adult. Virginia opossum, yes, the, mar the one and only marsupial that we have. Naked tail, naked nose, naked ears, naked feet. So why in the world is it walking in the snow? I'm not sure, but I tracked it that one day. And what a beautiful and unusual animal. They only live a few years. They do have a pouch called a, called a marsupium. And we'll start to wrap it up here. And they can have a 12 or 13 young that quickly develop inside of the body and then are birthed and climb up and hop into that pouch and, and go out the rest of their gestation, if you will, you know, external gestation. They, they're, in, they're in the belly for just under two weeks you know, within the mom, but then they finish growing inside of the pouch for another two months. Ooh, okay, I think we're, we've reached the end here. This is the star-nosed mole, by far the most unusual of mammals in Ohio.
Let's go bullet by bullet here. Reduced eyesight, it's almost blind, yet somehow it's still recorded as the fastest hunter ever. It can find, detect, and eat something like an insect within two tenths of a second. Active day and night, I'll tell you what, they're not only active in burrows and underground tunnels, they swim. You see those claws there? They're great for digging, but they're also flippers in the water. This is considered by me an aquatic mammal. It's an insectivore, meaning it likes to eat insects. Okay, it likes to eat small bits, small bits of meat. And how can we ignore these tentacles right on the nose there? Well, that's called the Imer's organ. There's 22 tentacles packed with nerve fibers. Uh, I have read 100,000 nerve fibers on that small little tentacle laden nose, which is no bigger than the tip of your thumb. And to put that in perspective, I mean, what does 100,000 nerve fibers mean? Your right hand, which is bigger than the nose of this animal, has 17,000 nerve fibers. So this animal can really sense its environment, even if it can't see that well. Very special critter. Okay. There are some mammals. We are right at the end here. There are some mammals that were in Ohio. Whoops. I wanted you to sort of take a guess at what that could be. Maybe you saw that already. This was documented not in Ohio, uh, but up until a point it was. Here, I'll, I'll go right there. The mountain lion, you know, extirpated from the state in, uh, by 1850. I'm seeing some other questions coming here. Did we forget raccoons? I did not forget raccoons. I think you missed raccoons, but a special animals. Okay. The mountain lion, that's what this is documented on the Grillarius Reserve in the cloud forest of Ecuador. Uh, the Grillaris Reserve is a 1,000 plus acre wildlife sanctuary, sanctuary funded by ecotourism. It's a win-win. They protect land but for the cloud forest and the surrounding watershed, the Grillaris Reserve. And look at this list here, Fisher, elk, gray wolf, bison, wolverine, Canadian lynx, which is uh, similar to a bobcat, but bigger, bigger feet. American Martin down at the bottom. So these are other animals that were in Ohio and I put the dates there and some estimates on when they uh, were gone from Ohio. Yes, very exciting, Puma, Amy. Yes, I agree with you. <laughs> oh, our Martin's coming back. Uh, you could ask that question about every creature here. Uh, even the elk, there's some reintroduction efforts. And um, it's worth looking into each of these animals to see if the state of Ohio or the Ohio State University has some reintroduction efforts. Uh, in general, no, uh, there, are, there are usually not any reintroduction efforts, especially with the mountain lion here. People are, uh, people are scared of a bobcat. I don't think they'll like to see a mountain lion. These are some of the sources I use to put this together. And this list sometimes of Mammals in Ohio is a moving target, but we do have about 60, give or take. And I say that because don't we count and don't the uh, feral cats count? Uh, some photo credit here by some colleagues of mine and in and around Cleveland Metro Parks and, and elsewhere that have provided some photos in addition to mine throughout this presentation. Thank you to all of them. As you're moving around Cleveland Metro Parks, if you visit ClevelandMetroParks.com and search for plant and animal checklists, you'll find uh, different checklists, you know, dragonflies and wildflowers and uh, butterflies, and there's one on mammals. It's great. So then you can put a check in when and where you saw it. I encourage you to do that. With that, we are all through. And take a look here. The next School of the Wilds presentation will be by naturalist Jeff Reby, and it is on owls. You could register at ClevelandMetroParks.com or by clicking the link that I just put into the chat feature right now, and that'll take you to the WebEx, take you to the Cleveland Metro Parks registration page, which includes the WebEx registration link. Will I be doing more merit badges? Asked by Alex and Andrew. Of course, I, when we get around to that with with COVID dwindling away and leaving us at some point, yes, I remain a merit badge counselor for you guys, and we'll get some more on the books there. 
thank you for all the kind words that are coming at me privately and, and to everyone. Thank you very much. Thank you. These are really nice. I really appreciate that you've taken the time to, to hang out with me here a little bit and talk about mammals. I really do think we got to most of the questions as I saw them, except for that one skunk question. And uh, I'll look at that and perhaps I'll email you individually if that's all right. Bye bye folks. Remember this is gonna show up on YouTube in a few days. I'm Marty Calabrese, this has been fun. I will, I will see you later.